Thanks, Anna Kaisa. Good morning for my part as well. Um, I'm a part of Anna Kaisa's Domestication in Action projects, where, where, where I uh, focus on activity reconstructions on reindeer to study human animal relationship. And I'm here now to present recent developments in the methods for physical activity assessment for a reindeer. So, reindeer is a semi domesticated species. What this means is that not all reindeer individuals are willing to work with human, willing to understand and read the human. But in those cases where the reindeer is willing and the handler and the reindeer are on the same wavelength, so to speak, it will uh, result in a mutual fulfilling relationship, working and social. From ethnographical data, we know that the reindeer were used to transport people and their belongings by carrying or pulling. Also, reindeer riding and reindeer skiing were used in transport. So, uh, as regards to activity, the method of attaching harness, you, see, you can see uh, ethnographical depictions of a harness and then current reindeer racing harness on the photo on the left. Uh, so, the method of attaching the harness would affect how the loads are distributed, the weight of the sled or fleece itself, on top of the uh, weight being pulled and transported. Reindeer riding, there is a suggestion that the rider should weigh no more than 70 kilograms. Uh, so, reindeer skiing, which uh, is currently used in reindeer riding, has its uh, Reindeer racing has its uh, uh, history, has its roots in the history, where there's a mention from the mid 17th century that a reindeer could run 18 measures of distance called Peninkulma on ice crust covered snow. And this distance, depending on the method of uh, calculating Peninkulma, is 108 or 180 kilometers. So already then uh, it was a point of pride, the speed and stamina of a reindeer. In, uh, uh, we rely not only on ethnographies, but we are very fortunate enough to have in this uh, domestication in action project and inter interview studies going on. And more luckily, we have an active reindeer herder and reindeer racer among the interviewers. So there's going to be a lot of in-depth activity related questions coming from we, me, which they gracefully accepted as part of their questionnaire. And this active reindeer racer will know how to ask more <coughs> pertinent questions relating to reindeer racing. So the methods of looking at activity are the same sort of methods that are used in act human act activity <coughs> reconstructions, which are bone cross-sectional properties, enthesial changes, and uh, patholo patholo pathologies of joints. First, mentioning we use uh, a pathological lesion scoring developed by Partasiewicz and Work Group, where we score for lipping, new bone growth, and abrunation uh, for all joints, not only phalang phalanges or metapodials. And all, we also track other pathologies, as trauma can also uh, indicate of a specific uh, human animal uh, action. Well. When we are directly change, uh, inferring method developed on cow, which, with, which, which has a, a two-digit uh, step compared to reindeer, which has two large, uh, in addition, two large vestigial digits, which are intensely used in, in a trans, uh, motion of the hoof, there, there will be a bit more for us to score and to understand. Then we also look at pathological lesions of the vertebra. There's a picture of uh, vertebral fusion and uh, spinous process warping. If you remember the ways the harness attached on the uh, previous uh, pic picture, this is a method of attaching harness in Siberia, which instead of having two bands attached uh, by a strap, this first strap straps goes obliquely across the reindeer. So it's possible that this warping is due to uh, uneven, uneven uh, 
load distribution to the reindeer spine. And the, these uh, vertebral fusions uh, may be suggestive of reindeer riding where, where there's or, or heavy carrying where there's a lot of, lot of um, uh, stress coming uh, on the vertebrae. Uh, this, uh, actually, this particular individual, uh, its rider was considerably heavier than 70 kilograms, but he considered that uh, if, if, if not is a strong reindeer, he can carry me, but it didn't come without a cost. And then changes at emphasis. Uh, we decided with Anna Kaisa to look at reindeer emphasis uh, to understand physical activity as one would do in humans. What was great about this was that we could make use of all the extensive studies made on human emphasis. And then we had like ground, groundwork of how, what's the best method, what all things to take into account when you are creating a scoring system. So, for example, understanding that there are fibros and fibrocartilaginous emphasis. There's bone formation and bone resorption going on. So, around 2014, Anna Kaisa and I went to, well, some years before, I went to Oulu University Zoological Museum. We took all of the reindeer there. We took all uh, appendicular uh, bones, uh, ap ap appendicular skeleton bones, sons, um, metapodials, and phalanges. We looked at each emphasis uh, separately, and we observed is there a variation in, in this emphasis, how much variation there is, and then we uh, confirmed that into a three-stage scoring system, or for some, you couldn't uh, find uh, observable variation. Uh, what we found that not all en entities did exhibit a variation, and those insertions were more likely to exhibit variation rather than insertions. So this work will be extended now with Emily Hull into phalan phalanges and possibly also to natural, natural crest. Why, but why are there changes at emphasis? Everyone who has worked with human emphasis and activity reconstructions know that this is far from explicit method. So why there are changes? There's are two sort of, in my view, different perspectives. It can be overuse, which would suggest that it's pathological, or another perspective that it's normal function, wear and tear. There's also other sources of variation at emphasis, which can be difficult to discern from activity effects, potential activity effects, which is age, and uh, where if one considers that the wear and tear is to the normal function, uh, age would increase the amount of your repetition, which, which would increase the variation in the morphology of, the, of an emphasis. Body size is also a factor to be considered, especially with reindeer, which has substantially um, different size of subspecies, also different size male and female reindeer. Hormones is a factor in humans that also should be taken into consideration with reindeer, especially culling, whether you're looking at an ox or a bull, does that differ? In our project, we are, we are happy again to have a researcher examining the effects of culling on the skeleton. Then environmental factors, the what kind, kind of um, is it mountainous? Is it um, more plateau-like? How much? How deep is the snow cover? All those sort of things will affect on the general expression of emphasis. So, <coughs> and third, our method of choice is biomechanical properties of mid shaft. Uh, this is uses the same basic principle as we have for emphasis, where we take the extensive studies made on human and apply it, adjust it according to reindeer morphology to suit the needs that we have. The first, very first step was to look at all the variation in the long bones and metapodials and to uh, try to understand how to orient the bone so that it would be standardized method uh, which is r repetitive and reliable. And with this method, we define a plane on which any possible torsion in the long bone mid shaft is observed. 
So uh, we there's dif different possibilities to measure the 50% cross section, maximum length, physiological or interarticular. And in this uh, method paper, we attempt to uh, illustrate which would be the most suitable method of uh, obtaining the 50% cross section. And then this is where we are at. And this is, I'm now presenting some ongoing and future work, so you can keep on following us. Uh, I am especially interested in how the harness attachment, the weight of the sled, how, how the weight is being distributed, uh, how that affects the uh, movement of limb joints. I uh, uh, would like to know the extent of which, how, how, how much there needs to be weight in for, the, in, uh, for the limb movements to change and possibly change the muscle recruitment. And um, that is something I wish to do in large scale, but let's see how funding goes with that. And then we, uh, the understanding comes from ethnographies and the interviews, and then I, I would like to uh, include that into looking at these are traditional weights being used, these are reindeer racing you know, kilometers per hour, and how does the limb joint movement and muscle rec recruitment m m uh, change. We also, I, I was fortunate to meet with Jarmo Kynkäniemi, a reindeer herder, who is willing to show me one of, when he slaughters one of his racing reindeer, all the muscles and muscle attachments, where I can check that everything was done correctly on our emphasis paper, and if there's something that needs to be redrafted, I can do that with his help. I think that was just the most generous thing ever. And when we present the standardized method for obtaining the cross-section, we are going to look at differences between free-ranging corralled and racing reindeer within, you know, a limb element and uh, um, uh, between limb elements if there's like a uh, difference uh, not perhaps seen comparing two uh, limb segments but com complete limb elements if I made myself understood. Uh, and then, of course, the additional scoring and then checking, checking the existing scoring. And I myself am very interested in understanding uh, the etiology, what affects changes we observed at emphasis, the why we observed changes in bone cross sectional properties. And I th think that m you might know me as a human activity reconstruction person, I think by adding another study species will uh, able me to enhance understanding of methodology. And I'm very grateful that you took the attention to listen to my presentation. I acknowledge our funding parties, which are European Research Council, Academy of Finland and University of Oulu. And you can follow our of official work and, and unofficial and social activities in the domestication in app action project by looking at the web page, Facebook and Twitter. We've already tweeted. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>